Hello guys and welcome back to the show. In the last tutorial, we saw how to set up Flask and create your first web app in Flask. In today's tutorial, we are going to look at how to pass variables to the URLs and how to use templates in Flask. Let's start by doing the whole process again. So I'll close this. Instead of the terminal, what I'm going to do is to create a file called vars.py. Now that vars.py has been created, I'll go into VS Code, go into vars.py, and then start the whole process again. Again, I could have done it inside of the app.py file, but I decided to start from scratch so that we can go over what we did the last time. And before you start, make sure that you have activated your virtual EMV. So I will import Flask from Flask. I will save from Flask. I will import Flask. I need to create a new instance of Flask. So I will say app is Flask and I'll pass it the underscore underscore name underscore. And I will say if underscore underscore name underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore then app dot run. Then I want to set debug to true. Now, if I start the application and we look at what we did the last time, what you realize that it is static, it never changes, it is hello world and it will always stay hello world. So what we're going to do is to allow users to pass variables into our view function and then dynamically change what we have on our view page. So what I'm going to do is to create a function, define greet and this greet will return for now hello. If I start the application and I go to app the root. So now if I start the application and I go to the slash URL, what I will see is just hello. Now we want someone to be able to come here and then type in something like Chris and then have hello Chris instead of just hello. Okay. So what I'll do is to allow a user to pass in a variable into our view function. To do this, what I need to say is that if someone goes to the slash URL and the person provides a name, so I will say name and I can pass the name here as well. Okay. So I'm saying that if someone goes to this slash URL and the person provides a variable, okay, a variable, anything that the person provides, what I want to do is to pass that variable that the user provides. I want to pass it to the view function. And then what I will say is that concatenate that to the hello. So if I say sarpon, I have hello sarpon. If I say uncle, I have hello uncle. So we are dynamically changing what we see on the view page. So now we've seen how to dynamically pass variables into the URL, but there is something in flats called converters. So you can actually specify the type that you're expecting the user to pass in your URL. In this case, I'm passing a name into the URL so I can specify the type to be a string and how converters work is by basically coming over here and then typing in the type that you expect the user to type into the URL. In this case, I'm expecting a string, so I will put in a string. If I start the server now and I type in Chris, everything works. If I type in one, one works as well because one can also be a string. But watch what happens when I change the type to int. I'll change the type to int and then instead of saying one, I'll pass it a name called Chris. I get not found. That is because one can be a string, but Chris can never be an int. That is the reason why we get this error. And one thing to note is that you don't always have to have one view function. I could basically have another view function called index and this index could just return hi with an emoji. Okay. And I can specify that if someone goes to the slash URL without providing any URL variable, it should return hi. If I go to the views page and I type in this, I get hi. And if I type in slash Chris, I get not found, but if I change this to a string, I get hello Chris. The next thing we're going to look at is how to render templates in Flask. Now rendering templates in Flask is really, really simple. The first thing you need to do is to create a directory called templates directory. 
I'll come over here and turn on the server and inside of the root of the application, what I'm going to do is to create a directory called templates. So mkdir templates. Inside of this template directory, I'm going to create a file called hello.html and then I'll type in HTML5 like so. Now it is important to know that Flask uses Jinja2 template engine for us automatically so we don't have to install anything. If I come into the terminal and I do pip list, as you can see, we have Jinja2 over here. That is the template engine that Flux is using, so we don't have to install anything else. It gets installed for us when we install Flask. Now, instead of this template, what I'm gonna do is to basically say hello, okay? So I create a h1 tag and I'll say hello, like so. Now I can come into the vars.py file and then I will say that from Flask, I want to import render template. Now that render template has been imported, rather than saying return high, what I'm gonna do is to return render template and then the name of this file, okay? So what I'm gonna say is that render template, it says that it takes in the template name and then some context, which is any other parameters or any other thing that I want to pass to the template. Okay, so I could say that the name of the template that I would like to render is hello.html. So I'll just have to pass it hello.html like so. So now if I go to the slash root, it will render this HTML over here. And let me put an emoji here as well. So now if I start the server and I go to the slash root, I get hello pizza. So that's how templates work in Flask. Now templates allow us to do some cool stuff. When we saw the signature of the template, you saw that we could pass it an additional context of type any. So if I wanted to pass in any additional thing to the template, what I could do is basically say that list of name and the list of names that I would like to pass to the template will be a list which contains Chris, a pizza emoji and Ben. So now I can basically use this inside of the view, okay? This will be automatically passed to the hello.html file. Rather than saying hello, what I can do is to look through the list that I have. So in Jinja, this is how we look through things. So you have the curly braces, the percent sign, and then you say for i in the list of names. And what you need to do is to end that. So you say end for, so you say for, I, which means for everything inside of the list of names and the list of names is what we passed in here. I want to have the UL tag, I have to have an LI tag and I want to pass in I. And to render a variable, we use two curly braces like that. So now if I go to the slash URL, I'll have Chris, Pizza and Ben. There's one more thing I want to talk about with regards to templates. Now, if you're building a complex application, you realize that most of the templates will have the same element, all right? Will have a lot of things repeating. So if I had an about page, I would have to go into the template file and create about.html, copy this whole thing, paste that here. And the only thing that I'll be changing is the body, okay? and maybe the title because I would like this to be about. So Jinja has a way of having a layout or a base HTML file, which will be used for all the pages on your app or on your website. So basically what I can do is instead of having lots of files which have the same elements repeating stuff every single time, what we like in software engineering is the drive principle. So don't repeat yourself. So what we're gonna do is to create a base.html file and instead of this base.html file is to let the user inject whatever they want into the body and keep the rest. So what I'm gonna do is to have this over here and I'll say block content and I'll come over here Then I'll always have to end the block. So I'll say end block content like so. So now if I go into the about.html file, instead of having all this here, what I could do is to remove this and instead say extent base dot html so what i'm saying is that i need everything that is in here i'm extending the base dot html file instead of my about dot html file and the only thing that i would like to change is the things inside of the block content so i'll copy this i'll paste this here and i'll say block then i'll say about page and i can put this inside of a tag so i can say h1 if i go to my vars.py what I can do is to create an about root and the template that I would like to render is the about.html file. 
and let me create a hello.html file just so I don't get an error. So now if I start the application and I go to the slash above root, I should see about page. Okay. If I change something in the base.html, because it is being used across all the HTML files, if I change something here instead of the body, so I say, hey, Ben, and I refresh this, you also see, hey, Ben over here. So the base is, will be used across all the HTML files. And the only thing I'll be changing is the things inside of the block content. I hope this makes sense. So that is all you need to know about templates and passing variables in the URL. A recap of what I did. To pass variables into the URL, all you need to do is to specify what variable you want to pass into the URL. You pass that variable into your view function. In this instance, I created a function called greet. We took in the name and then rendered the name. So if I go to the slash name, which could be any name, so I'll put in sarpon, I see hello sarpon. So that's how you pass variables into the URL to dynamically change what we see on the view page. We saw how to use templates in Flask. We saw how to use a single template and we saw how to use a base template, which can be used across all the templates that you have. That's all I want to cover for today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.